What's going on, good people of YouTube? Today I'm going to be doing an experiment, per se, of uh, how to remove mill scale from hot rolled uh, steel. I'm going to be doing a project that involves uh, building some uh, banister or step rail, handrails, and I want it to look the best possible. Uh, you know, I'm not concerned about the welds. I'll use, I'll bevel my edges and uh, there won't be any mill scale there, but as far as paint adhering to the surface, that's a different story. And the applications that I've used in the past for outdoor targets and everything, I've never really, it's never really been an issue uh, because you're going to destroy the paint anyway from, you know, bullets. But on this application, I want to make sure I can get all the mill scale off possible so the paint will look as best possible. Now, I've already went over this with uh, my angle iron and a fire brush which done a decent job at getting most of the mill scale off but there's still quite a bit on there uh, as you can see i mean it's got a sheen to it uh, but i want it to look shiny like the like the edges do here and you see when i handle it that's mill scale coming off this stuff is so hard to come off and you can use a flap wheel to take it off but the problem with using a flap wheel is you tend to it it loads the uh disc per se let me show you what i'm talking about okay here's uh, an example of a flap wheel disc that i would commonly use to remove mill scale with but the problem is, is it gets loaded up and what i mean by loaded up as you can see here on the edges that it just gets uh particles material loaded up on the edges and it becomes useless I mean, that's smooth right there versus up here where it's coarse and you can still feel the grit. But around the edges where I've been using it, it's, it's just slick. It's smooth. So it's basically no good except for this piece. And the thing about using an angle grinder and a flap wheel is when it gets loaded up like that, you tend to angle the disc more. And all that does is cut into the metal. I'm sure I've got a piece of a uh, plate steel. Well, I've got somewhere around here where I've actually done that, trying to remove the mill scale and bearing down too hard, getting impatient. And it actually cuts into the steel and creates a divot or an uneven surface. And I don't want that. Because like I said, it's going inside of a house and I want it to look best as possible. Uh, you can use hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid. Uh, that's a very effective way of taking it off, but it's also comes with a lot of dangers as far you know you got to take a lot of universal precautions with that stuff uh and don't really want to do that so i'm going to try the white vinegar method and see how that works and basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap uh, paper towels in white vinegar and leave it and wrap these pieces of steel for about 24 hours and we'll see what it looks like and i'll just we'll, We've got a good picture, baseline of what it looks like, and we'll see what happens after 24 hours. Okay, guys, I didn't record video uh, me actually wrapping this and the uh, white vinegar because it's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, just I did take some uh, a paper cloth or paper towel and rub it. I made sure it was on the uh, steel real well before I wrapped it in paper towels, but once I wrapped it in paper towels, I just soaked in white vinegar and i was debating on stacking them on top of each other but i don't guess it really matters i'm just going to leave it like this for 24 hours and we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like all right here's a good example of what uh raw raw hot rolled steel looks like uh, when you get it from your metal place and this unlike the other square tubing that i had i had already hit it with a wire wheel this has been untouched so this gives you a good not good idea of what it looks like. This has even got some surface rust to it. But yeah, we'll see what this looks like after I uh, let it soak in white vinegar. Yeah, I just can't leave well enough alone. So what I've done, because I thought, well, I just can't leave it alone because this paper towel is going to dry out. And, the, you know, it just doesn't sound like it'd be that effective after, you know, it dried out or whatever. It'd be best if it was submerged. But I only have a gallon of, or a half gallon, whatever, how much was in that container. So I'm trying to make the best out of it. So what I done was I got a trash bag. And of course I wrapped that flat bar stock up in here also. 
and I put this in the bathtub and poured quite a bit more vinegar so it's soaking and this uh, trash bag just trying to help clean it up because if I damage this bathtub uh, y'all won't know it the single guys out there won't realize this but you married people know uh, where I'm going with this but I don't need to uh, mess up nothing so in the house so just taking some precautionary uh, measures just in case the rust gets off in the marks it somehow I don't know with my luck anything can happen but I decided to take it a step further and use this to see if it helps any uh, instead of just leaving the paper towels wrapped around it and it eventually drying off so I can't leave well enough alone I'll keep messing with it but we'll check back tomorrow see what it's like it's just about time I'm going to let this soak for a few more hours but you can tell it's doing work tag on I'm going to pour, pour a little more vinegar on there and can't wait to see what it looks like hey guys just thought I'd uh, go ahead and start talking about what's going on here while I get on my PPE real quick. Uh, I don't recommend doing this in the shower, bathtub, or whatever. You know, I mentioned about my wife might skin my hide, and I paid attention to it, and I went on about midnight. I went in there and poured some more vinegar on it. Didn't see nothing wrong. Well, this morning when I got up, I went in there to pour some more vinegar on it and noticed that some of the mill scale... Uh, combination of rust mill scale and white vinegar had etched some of the bathtub which I was able to get off but it scared me I had to use a piece of scotch bright and some elbow grease but uh, it's pretty nasty as you can see but you know what do you expect so I tried to take as much precaution as I could with these bags and everything and I got them outside as quickly as I could. And you can tell it's pretty messy. There's a, it almost looks like blood. Almost. I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like. I've got glasses on and rubber gloves and just to be on the safe side. I'm not a chemist. I don't know what all this stuff uh, would do. So. Whew, watch that. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh my god, I can tell the difference already. Well, that is crazy. Wow. Oh man, that was definitely worth it. Nice. Very nice. And then going on top of it with some Scotch Bright does even better. Wow. And for the sake of video time, I went ahead and used Scotch Bright all over this. And I am impressed. Yeah, that looks great. That is the best process I've ever used. I'll probably, unless I'm in a hurry, never use flat disc again. Oh yeah. Man, look how nice and shiny that looks. So yeah, it can be messy. I would recommend uh, 
making some kind of dispo uh, vat uh, for this. Maybe just take some cheap wood and line it with plastic and do it that way rather than the way I did it with first wrapping it in the paper tissue, leaving it in my shop area, and then transferring it to trash bags in a bathtub and then transferring that outside. Just go ahead and build some type of a container first and like I said, line with plastic and then go from there. It's got a superficial scratch going down there for some reason. That was already there though. But that looks amazing. I'm giving this a thumbs up in my book. Okay guys, I'm highly impressed with how this works, but I haven't already mentioned it. I went ahead and dried them off and I also run a, a rag, fleece rag down through the tubes just to be because i'm kind of anal like that i don't I'm trying to prevent rust so it only makes sense to dry it out maybe even put the hair of all or vegetable oil in it that might be overkill and if you remember this is the flat bar stock and that was actually in the worst condition and i'll post a picture of it here and is a even though it's a huge difference i mean it's like night and day uh there's still a little bit left that was on there pretty good and if you remember it was actually rusting this flat bar was and this ain't no big deal at all i mean i may or may not uh <laughs> take a wire wheel and see if i can finish getting that off i mean i kind of hate to leave the little black blemishes uh everything else looks so good nice and shiny but as far as the square tubing goes man that thing shined like a new nickel it is just uh amazing and just for the record i didn't uh leave this in for a whole 12 hours like i had planned it was uh i'm just trying to think it's about 2 30 now so i'm shy of about four hours so eight hours total i left these wrapped up in white vinegar so there you go guys if you've never tried this process and you've got time for it, you know, a lot of people have, don't have time. They have to go get metal and work with it then. But if you've got to, you know, can put it off a day, I would definitely do this because it's just so much easier. It's cheaper and looks much nicer. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you.